back to the channel with them. Another day, another trip. So I got a customer that has a little LS Swap S10. A guy named Rick hit me up a few weeks ago. We've been talking back with Ford. We asked me if I'd come out here and wire his fans up. He lives out in here in Greensboro, which is like an hour and 45 minutes, like two hours away. We're running some traffic, so it's taking a little longer than that. But me and Damien decided we'd hit the highway. I got some tools in the back back here rattling. I guess one of the tires feel like on this truck, like it needs to, uh, like it's throwed the weight off of it. It needs to be rebalanced. There's a little shake in the back. Me and Damien decided to ride out here today and uh, wire this thing up for him. So he's got a few little odd things we need to wire on. It shouldn't take too long, but it's been a pretty nice trip. What do you think, Damien? Other than a little bit of traffic. So I'll tell you, here's how smart people are. There's a road construction sign, a, a digital board. It says, right lane closed ahead. So all the traffic for like, started moving over. Way back, the traffic up for like 10 miles. We get up there, we're in the right lane. Everybody's getting over. I told Damien, I said, stay in the right lane, son. Collins ain't here yet. Just stay in the right lane, keep going. All these people had gone over for all these miles of back traffic up and literally it was from road construction on Friday they didn't turn the board off and nobody was smart enough just to stay in that lane until you can call them so if you're ever going down the road and you see road and you see something that says right lane close get to the closed part before you get over don't just automatically assume get over because sometimes them boards are left on sometimes they're not there was no, there was, it was construction from days ago. You know I mean? It had cones out on the side of, but the lane wasn't closed and people were just freaking back in traffic up like crazy. But like I said, me and David, we seen a couple cool good looking cars and stuff like that it's Sunday. Nice little ride, I'm gonna go out here and make a couple dollars and uh, get ready for work week this week. Well, we made it, we were like a half mile away from the place. Watch out for the next course. Tammy says he wants to see some beef jerky, so we're gonna stop by and get him something here in just a minute as we leave here. Y'all check Ricky's old truck out. So we got the wiring cleaned up on it through there. Got the, everything wired the way it needs to be wired. He's in there hooking the last wire up on it now. Tell me that ain't gonna be a cool little sleeper truck. I like it. You got the damn old Camaro style wheels on it. It's gonna make him a nice little truck. Came home this afternoon, started doing my sheet rock, started getting it, my piece sheet rock. Now I gotta finish screwing all that in over there. Got my boxer here, gotta finish boxing it in. Put my one piece here, tape it, start mudding it in. We're getting there though. I said, it ain't bad. Got my new corner cast, I had to piece them together right here and right there. Try to stagger them off, and that way it ain't just a straight line right here in this area. I still gotta dig out some of the the mortar that's there, not mortar, but then said whatever drywall mud, what mud, some of the mud that's there. So I can clean up some of that, but it's getting there. I gotta fix that little bit of wall right there. I gotta tape it and then pull back some of that paint and fade it all in until it was never pulled out of here. You can see all the different colors. I don't know who was thinking what when they painted it brown like that, but I painted it blue. It was tan. I painted it blue, and now it's gray. So, but I gotta get over here and start screwing some of these in. Winter time's here. It's good and cold outside. It ain't cold, cold. I'm still in shorts and short sleeves, but it's chilly this morning here in North Carolina. So I got uh, two starter jobs to do first thing this morning. And I have a uh, set of wheel bearings doing in front of like a Durango or something like that, hub bearings. So it should be a pretty decent day on pace. So I'm gonna go through and uh, I gotta go by the bank too. I just not thought about it. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna run up here to Abbott's, get me a new piece of cardboard to lay down on. I'm gonna get me uh, cause I don't, I don't like laying on the ground. I like give me a brand new fresh piece of cardboard to lay on. So I'm gonna go up here and steal me a fresh piece of cardboard out of the back. And I'm gonna uh, give me some breakfast and y'all ride with me. Let's roll over here and I look rough this morning. <laughs> but let's, you know, let's roll over here and make this money today, real quick. That way we can get back and work on that tile work or work on that freaking bathroom. We ain't on tile work yet. We gotta finish one more cement board in there and then uh, we gotta start thin setting it. 
in the bathroom rights. Hold on a minute. Yes. What up, Jackass? Why ain't y'all's ass at school? Hey, look, look at my little here. beaner. Hey, look at my little beaner over here. Right Why ain't look your look ass at school? Hey, hey right tell me something. Hey. When did a Mexican boy become Amish? Where'd you get your haircut at, bro? Look at that haircut. Yeah. Listen, you like your old Amish boy right there. What the hell is that? You need to do that. <laughs> you want to get gap today? You want to get gap? You don't want to school to get. So you on your way to school? Yeah, I'm going to school today right now. Are you? What hey. you learning up at school of tech? Construction and motor. Yeah. Hey, I'm just... <laughs> yeah, fuck that! Working on this little Civic right here. Bill started the first one this morning. It uh, somebody's been in here before. The starter bolts are completely loose, so I'm gonna put a starter on it, put it back together, and get her done. Got this one done. Y'all look at them bumps right there. That's from that fiberglass the other day on my arm. That's how bad that thing was itching. Made some kind of little bumps on my. A little dirty now. Hundred dollar bill out on that one. Now let's roll out right here, and let's go do our other starter job this morning, which is so we just pull out that driveway. Let's pull another driveway. Here's the other one we're coming to do right here at this house. Literally neighbors. This is a five three truck, so. I'm gonna roll out here and uh, put a starter on it real quick. Got this avalanche here. I'm gonna pull the starter off of it. It's bad. I'm gonna check the flex weight bolts because I have noise on the back of the motor, but I think it's the starter's broke. So let's just check it out and see what's going on with it. All right, well, I got that one done. Let me clean you up a little bit. Got that one done. Ended up uh, a lady, she had the truck, she had the motor rebuilt in it twice by garage and the motor's making a noise again so the starter on it the other day it was clicking i thought well heck it's just the starter so which the starter was bad so i replaced the starter on it crunk it up and it has a number six misfire and it's hammering but it sounds like something rubbing the crankshaft it just has a weird sound to it flex plate bolts look good in it all that looked fine because i checked it it just sound different you know what i mean like it just has a it don't have a rod knock sound it just has a to do, like a revolution, not like a cam. A cam turns half the speed, so a lifter's just like a slow. Doo -doo. This is a faster speed one, but it's just like a boop, 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 boop. weird. Anyways, so I only charge her forty dollars to do the starter because uh, the motor making a noise like it was. So we're actually gonna put a used motor in it here, not this Monday. But, well, today's Monday. Next Monday, we're gonna put a. Uh, we're gonna go through and put a motor in it or whatnot i'm gonna pick it up and bring it over here knock out the motor job put it back together and get it done get paid on it so well let's get out here and get working on this uh i got a little jeep compass i've had here for over a week i gotta figure out what's going on with it it's overheating has a misfire so i'm gonna check it out real quick and we'll go from there working on this mercedes today Put some front pads on it, rotors. I noticed that there was a little groove here. And there's a groove here on the inside. Well, if you look at these pads, look at these pads. They're hung over the edge here. And look right there. Not pause if somebody put the wrong pads on this thing at one time. Look at it. It's rubbing the outside edge. Sorry about the blur. Look at that. I ain't never seen no pads like that. So I wonder, like I said, I wonder if somebody done brake pads on this thing and they stuck the wrong thickness brake pad on it. Y'all check that crap out. Yeah, these pads are definitely not the correct ones. They need to be swapped, but they weren't the right ones. Bolts, 
So we got our half inch stud kit. The jig to do it from Tick Performance. Went ahead and had Nigel order all that stuff for me. I got another guy going to buy my head studs because the you know my head studs actually knew they were a lot more than what this stuff is, honestly. I should have just done it a long time ago. The CAC 25, there's nothing wrong with it. If you're going to run an iron block or something like that, it's good. It's really not that bad on aluminum block if you really get lucky and you have one that is uh, with good threads in it. But as much as this junk that I'm messing with from here and there and there and here and there, it just don't make sense to keep on doing the same old thing and keep on staying with the uh, the regular head bolt size and diameter with these old threads they like to pull out. It just makes a lot more sense to go over to the half inch stuff. Sorry, tired a little bit. But anyways, it don't make sense to go to the half inch iron to, to not go to the half inch stuff. You know, I got a guy going to buy my head studs. I'll move the money over. So basically, I'll move this move this money over. I won't have to buy no more time search, mess with time search and all that. I'll just add the, the jig itself so we can just start doing half inch studs and we can reuse stud from block to block. And the doubt themselves from block to block. We'll, we'll have everything we need just to go over. We'll have a lot better stud, a lot stronger stud. I'm going to show you all the difference in the stud diameters and all that. I'm going to do a video on how to uh, do this half inch stud stuff. But the block in the car, I've done time certain one of them, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and pick up another block, send a machine shop, get it bored, go ahead and do that, get it took care of. Half inch studs. What I'm thinking about, my, my car's always been a little bit heavier. As crazy as it sounds, that 10,000 is over. So usually we build, we build 20,000 over motors, 380 motors, instead of 378 motors, it's 380s. My car has typically always liked a 3810 motor over a 380 motor. So that little 330 inches, it's always liked it a little better than the 328 even though or 331 whatever it's always liked it a little bit more than what the smaller even though it's only 10,000 it's probably 10 or 15 horsepower and a little bit of torque but it just it does make a difference so i'm more than likely thinking about building the 3810 motor i think about just to go ahead going back over and uh i got six pistons over at nigel's so i think i'm just going to go ahead and take the other couple and go ahead and deck them to be the same as the other and that way I got them all the same and we'll either build aluminum I'm either gonna build an aluminum rod motor 318 or a aluminum or a steel rod motor 318. I ain't made my mind up on that yet. One or the other we're gonna make we're gonna make it happen. So and I'm thinking 318 bore motor, half inch head studs. I've seen that Pro Max makes a 240cc head that'll fit on the 380 bore stuff. Or they say 389, but I messaged them because I've seen a couple motors have the 380 bore on it. Sorry, I don't know why I'm yawning so bad. So I'm really thinking about going to the uh, being a 310 motor, putting a 240cc head on it, buying a new lower intake, and just going that route is probably what we're going to do. So. We had a car that could have won that race the other day up at, at Wiltsboro if it would have stopped being a piece of crap. But live and you learn. So we're going to get something together. Hopefully something that runs a little bit better. We're going to put Caden in the fours and we'll see how it does. So y'all ride with us for a little bit. Yeah, boy. I hear, look at him. Getting it done, getting it done, getting it. it Excuse my way. mess, cause we doing sheet rock and we doing the stuff. Rods out over here, but I got the and takes off. Uh, put the manifold inside the car. He's been working on this while I've been working on that today. He got to he get the head bolts out, so that way I can sell the head bolts. Pay for this. So says you got to pull the rocker arms off, put those in the car, then yank his head bolts, and we'll have it tore down to where we start selling some of this stuff. Man, this sheetrock and drywall and cement board is kicking my butt. Just the dust. I got everything. Uh, everything's boxed in in there. Everything's up. Everything's mudded. Last night was rough when I sanded it. And God, the freaking mess. I closed the bathroom door. Sanded, I woke up this morning. The whole kitchen, the steps and all had dust on it. 
even though I had a fan on the window open, barely could breathe. We got it done. We got that done. So I've already started painting them. I didn't have tape to tape off my bathtub. So I made sure I didn't get nothing on the bathtub. So tonight I'm going to go through and get me some blue tape so I can tape off my edges. That way I can paint my, uh, my membrane, my rubber membrane or whatever, my waterproofing. I got to go about an inch from the bottom to the tub itself, put another coat on everything, and I'll be ready to start tiling. But I was just not thinking, look at this. Michael Van Dyke. Michael Nell. You know, you got good friends when they give you towels, stuff to wash your hands with, stuff like that. I was just thinking, because I, I was out here, I pulled the injectors out of Caden's intake and backflowed them. And I was like, man, my hands stink. I don't want to smell that when I go get breakfast. And I remembered, I got paper towels with me. I got rags with me to wash my hands. Like, stuff I don't ever think about. You know, I don't, you can tell my hands. I, I usually work. I don't, I don't think about cleaning until I get in the shower, you know? I got to scrub up a little bit. If I'm very, very nasty, I'll go wash my hands or whatnot. But a lot of times I eat with dirt and crap on my hands. And I was thinking about, you know, Michael Van Dyke brought me them wipes. We was at the track one night, didn't have no towels. Michael Nell was like, here you go, here's some towels, take them with you, gave them to us because we didn't have a rag to dry stuff off with. You don't think about stuff like that and how nice it is to have that stuff until you have it, you know? Until you actually, so sometimes you need to slow down and think about it, you know? But we always appreciate it around here. There it is. Let's get a new tub in. Get the back in. Might do a border. Probably just gonna paint it. That high, that's about how high it used to be. So I'm gonna finish this wall up. Gotta do this, do my nook. We're gonna change that out to like a bronze, do a black shower curtain rod, change that out. That's already been changed out down here. Gotta get the freaking paint off of it or mortar. Then we're gonna go through and uh, let me step back for a minute. We're gonna change that to black. I'm gonna build a border around this mirror instead of it being just stuck up there like it is. Probably gonna change the vent out, don't know yet. And then we gotta do the floor. So tomorrow, I'm gonna finish doing the tile work tonight and I'm gonna come here tomorrow. I'm gonna paint the uh, paint the place. All that green is all weather. And it's all waterproofing. Not weather, waterproofing. That I put over all that stuff. This wall right here, this was just left over. So I went ahead and coated it while I was at it. But like I said, it's looking pretty decent. Well, update. Got that cylinder again for some reason. We got something going on with it. So I'm gonna check the wiring harness out real good. Might even replace the wiring harness, but something's going on because same one before the injector's been swapped around. So I don't think it's an injector, but so we torched the hole now. It wasn't the other side was the side I thought had pulled a bolt, but it wasn't. It was this one on this side. So I don't know what's going on right here. And that's the same hole where we cracked the head at. That's the same spot, same one that got that. So. We'll get it figured out and go from there. Well, <laughs> me and Damien was our way here at Nigel's and run out, <laughs> run out of gas. I ended up, the gas hand was, it was just barely touching me and I was like, I should stop. I was like, oh, it'd be all right to get over there. I could gas on the way home. I felt like a boo, 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 boo. I said, Second, well, I was say like second week get around. Whatever the other week was, I ran out of gas and the gas hand was broke. With me and Damien in it at the same time, we're out of gas again. So it is what it is. Not just bringing us something.